Have you ever wanted to speed up your table gameplay by using dungeon tiles? Well, if so, this video is going to be for you. This is going to be Dungeons and Dragons Beginning Crafters Dungeon Tiles. Hi guys! I'm DM Dunn. Today I'm going to show you how I made and I use my dungeon tiles and it's definitely sped up my gameplay. When I started off I was using battle mats and uh, wet wet erase markers, wet dry dry erase, erasable markers. Um, and it's really nice because you can draw whatever you want. However the downfall is whenever they got far enough in a dungeon and I had to redraw something else I'd have to tell everybody like alright um I guess bathroom and drink break and everybody got to go get drinks while I'm sitting here trying to erase and redraw and it, it was tedious and it just seemed like it really kind of killed the action um, and I wanted something that would be a little bit faster but also something a little bit more three-dimensional and a little bit more cool and so I decided to start using dungeon tiles. Dungeon tiles are really not that complicated to make. A lot of people try to stress about like have to be exact measurements and you know super fine details. I mean don't stress. I mean it's not gonna it's not that complicated so the first thing that you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to go ahead and get some good foam um, like this pink or this blue foam from like Home Depot or Lowe's um, and mine that I have here it's uh, one inch one inch thick and then you're just gonna want to figure out what size shapes that you want to cut it into so for example I have some two by fours and of course you're going to want to make multiples of these because you're going to be able to put them however you want. So you're going to want to have several of them. I also have a 4 by 4s And I also have some 8 by 8s I have one 12 by 12 And then if you just have, you know, like one of these and uh, I have, what, four of the 8 by 8s And then a big handful of the 4 by 4s I have some more of these as well and just as many if not more of the two by fours then you can make pretty much anything you want for example if you don't want to make um, an eight by eight well if you have enough of the four by fours then bam there you go so if you're making a bunch of smaller ones make even more of them and this would be more versatile for you as well too if you don't want to get locked into the big ones but in addition to those um, I did make a 4x16 as well for long corridors and long walkways. Um, and I also made, um, this one was like spe specific, but I found how to make it versatile. This was like the top of a, like a guard tower on top of a castle. Um, and this was the measurements and the dimensions that I was given in my module. So I tried to just make it. And it's not a perfect circle because I kind of freehanded it. <laughs> I mean, it's true with a pencil best I could arch it and then I just cut it out um, and then the nice thing is is this it was two two levels it was a upper level and a lower level so I made two because I didn't want to have to take everything off of it all of my set pieces and my minis and everything to replace it so I had one set for the ground level and then I could just pull over boop, the second one and have them on the board next to each other if they went down the ladder they knew which level they were on the nice thing though is I can still use it because I can still use the same shapes or boom I got a pretty much a circle if I want a big circle room as well. Versatility and being able to use all of these dungeon tiles for many many different things is what we're going to be um, looking for. I'm going to when I'm done talking about here I'm going to go ahead and just set up a couple of different um, display options just show you guys a few ideas and I'll let you see those as well. Um, but again, so how do we make it? We just measure out what size um, shapes that you want. If you have your procs on, uh, cutter, great. It'll just burn right through it super easy. Um, if you don't have a prox on, you can use a hot wire knife. I do recommend getting a metal um, uh, ruler. It makes it a lot easier whenever you're trying to cut because you can just put the metal right next to it. You just put the metal right next to it and you can just burn right through it nice and easy. This is also the same technique that I used to get these grids on here. This ruler is, is one inch wide or close enough to one inch for me. Um, and so I'll just put it on there. This tip is round. However, at the tip it is smushed. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but it does have a flat tip. And then I would just use this tip 
uh, against the metal ruler and just burn it, not very deep, but just enough to create these lines and just move the ruler until I got all the lines in there. And now you've got those, the grid in there as well. Um, after you got that, just take a foil ball and you're gonna wanna roll it over all of this for your texture. That's how you get your like your little dents and your bumps inside of there. Um, after you've got your texture, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna put some protection on there. So a layer of Mod Podge um, and like uh, Black Magic Craft says, kill two birds, one stone, add some color to it and you've got protection and a base coat. So a little bit of black in there, mix it up and you've got a nice base coat of protection when it's dry, tile, dark gray, light gray. I like to do a, uh, a burnt sienna as well here and there, kind of like almost looks like a little like rust or you know blood or whatever you want it to be, but just I just like to have a little bit of color on mine, and so that's what I did with those. I do paint the sides because when we're sitting on the table, you can see them, but I don't worry about the bottoms as you can tell. And after that, they're done. And all you gotta do is just pop them around and move them around however you want. They finished the room that you have set up and you just swipe it off to the side and rebuild the next room. It's super fast, super easy, and it's actually a lot more fun than trying to draw it out. Now, one thing that I did discover that I really liked and I found it out almost by accident was these corner shapes. I was cutting out a circle and then I kept the corner pieces. Why? Because we're crafters and we don't wanna throw stuff away. But then I realized that I had a wizard tower that was about this big, except for it was round instead of square. And I looked into my pile of leftovers and I went, oh my gosh, if I pop those in the corners, then guess what? Those are the walls and now my uh, tower is now round. So I went ahead and painted them up to match the paint job and voila, now you've got a round guard tower. And the nice thing is, is you can have as many layers as that tower goes so that you can have those different levels already set up with your terrain, um, like your wizard's desk, his library, his books, the minis, monsters, whatever you got. You can have those off to the side and just blam, plop it on the table. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, ready to go. So that was very popular for me. So I decided to go ahead and do the same thing for my bigger version. So I made some bigger circle corners. And then the same concept, and it works just the same way. You get all four of those, and then you've got a big round room as well. Now what's also nice is if you're gonna do a drop off, let's say this drops off into a pool of water. Um, so instead of, you know, let's say having a corner, a sharp corner in this natural pool in this cave, you can pop one of these guys on, and now it's more of a curved and it looks a little bit more natural. Um, and so don't be afraid to use your terrain for many different things. Um, so aside from just the basic tiles at this point, of course, you're just going to decorate it with whatever you got, you know, your stalactites, your stalagmites, you know, your rocks, your stones. Um, I made some spiral staircases. Um, this was just a circle that I made thinly and I made a few circles, um, cut them out. And then what I did is I just cut out one eighth, um, just measured it, you know, like pluses like a pizza. And I just cut out one little triangle. And then I did this another space where I cut out two of the tr two two of the pieces, and then three of the pieces, and the four of the pieces. And then I just layered them and glued them together. Uh, and then I just tried to cover up the edge with some drywall compound, paint it up. It's not big enough for minis to stand on. However, it does do a good job representing stairs in the corner of the room or in the center of the room. Uh, so it represents your stairs. You can have some normal stairs as well. You know, so this is where you're gonna have fun after you've got your basics doing all those kind of cool things. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a couple of different setups just for fun. Um, and we'll see you back in a minute.
right guys, I hope that this inspired you to make your own dungeon tiles and not sweat about how detailed they have to be or what sizes or how many you have to make. Just have some fun and you're gonna use whatever it is that you make, so make whatever you want and then I promise you, you're gonna be able to use those and create some really awesome things. Um, do us a favor, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe um, to our channel. If you help us out, please, please, please go ahead and hit our Patreon link, which is DM Done, uh, Patreons, uh, Patreon, Patreon.com slash DM Done, um, and give us some support there as well. Um, and then also we have our Amazon affiliate link. If you're going to buy anything from Amazon anyways, go ahead and click our link and it helps us out and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Hey guys, thank you so very much. And until next time, have more D&D &D fun with DM Done.